If one were to look at the stories you've told across your filmography, I'd make a case for how well you've captured the many aspects of the human condition, whether it's a character rediscovering themselves later down the road, facing a life-altering situation, or love in the many shades of it. Just when I think you've uncovered it all, you release another film, like The Idea of You, which beautifully captures a connection between two people on different life paths, but who are very much on the same frequency. Rather than make it some romantic fantasy, you make it a collection of small, intimate moments with genuine emotion. So my question, Mr. Showalter, and this is a silly one, how <laughs> do you continuously find a way up from where you were on the last project? What are you creatively and humanly plugging into that allows you to find more services to uncover and more feelings to feel? That's not a silly question. That's like the least silly question I've ever heard in my whole life. <laughs> you're like you're like bringing me to tears with that question um honestly it's just the opportunity to keep going there's no thing it's just i have um when i find a story that that connects to me and two characters and i want to tell their story all those opportunities open up again and but it feels new every time it doesn't i don't feel like i'm starting from where I left off. I feel like I'm starting from scratch. Yeah. Um, and so, um, and you look for great, you know, you need to have the right people that, to collaborate with that share that vision that want to go there with you. And Anne Hathaway would be a great example of like someone who was, was pushing me further as I pushed her and, and, and Nick as well. And, and everyone on this, all the people that worked on this movie that once we sort of got a sense of like what we were kind of, what we were doing and what we weren't doing, mm -hmm. um, you start to kind of go deeper in, into the kind of like rabbit hole of it and you get lost in it a little bit. Right. Yeah. I, well, I thought it was silly because obviously there are endless stories to tell about being alive. So it's like simply asking an artist or a storyteller, how do you continue to have stories or create more art? But I, I'm well, more you'd just be surprised. You'd be surprised. <laughs> quite, a, quite a few people like to tell the same exact story over and over again. That's true, too. Uh, to dig a little more into this, because I know we're going to run out of time, I, I spoke about how this feels like a collection of honest moments. One of my favorite honest moments happens early on, and it's when Solen uh, and Hathaway's character has an interaction with her ex-husband's wife. She comments on Solen's dress, but then a beat or two later, we see Solen re replaying that interaction in front of the mirror while she's alone. But she's saying what she would would have loved to have said to her ex's wife, which is something I think we've all done when the facade comes down and we're alone. It's it's a very true moment and there are many others. So to bring truth to what you're communicating in those moments, are you just walking through life and mentally dog-earing these little moments like that? Or do they surface more naturally when you're putting pen to paper as, you, as you're going through the Rolodex of you? It's the second thing. And, mm -hmm. and I really appreciate your question and and you're you're definitely seeing exact that is the first moment in the movie that tells the is the first clue to the move to the audience that this isn't a typical movie that this isn't a typical rom-com is that moment with Anne in the mirror mm -hmm. and and um because you're seeing behind the you're seeing behind the the sort of public self that she wants him to see that she wants Daniel to see her strong. She wants Daniel to see her unfazed. Um, she doesn't want him to see that she's in any pain or anything like that. And so that scene of her behind uh, talking to herself in the mirror is, is this window into the, the vulnerable person that we're, that we're dealing with and is treated in a kind of non comedic way. And so, um, even though there is a big laugh line in there, it's really a moment where I I feel like it clues the audience into um, where this movie might go or might not go, as I said. But to end, but to go back to your question, 
you discover these things as you're telling these character story. Well, what happens next? Well, she goes back to her apartment and her house and she takes her makeup off because she put on makeup for driving him to, she put the makeup on to take her kids to Daniel's house. Right. She wanted to Daniel to see her looking a certain way. And yeah. so now she's taking that off and she's having this very honest moment with herself in the mirror. And you just sort of let the story tell itself. You just kind of follow it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I picked up on those details and it, it just goes to show how I think you're a good storyteller. So keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for your time. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Preston. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Hope we talk Take again. Take care. Yep. Me too.